I'm not trying to put you on the, the spot or anything, but you've had like a few days to kind of think about this. Um, just in terms of Candace, just what's um, happened there? How come that fit didn't quite work? And then you as a first time coach in this league, any lessons that you sort of took from that? Yeah, I mean, kind of what I touched on before, you know, just wasn't quite uh, the correct fit for us and wasn't what, um, you know, on both sides, you know, and coming from her perspective and ours, um, you know, and just taking time to really work through some things as a, my youthfulness in that is just sometimes um, things just don't work out. And as long as the, there is transparency, like with what's going on in my, in my opinion, um, we were talking through some things and understanding, just trying to adjust through some things with a, a new system, um, a new team and things of that nature. Um, no hard feelings. Candace is an amazing player and she's done amazing things in our league. And obviously her career um, should be highlighted and will be highlighted someday, but even still, um, she has a lot of basketball to play. And I would just say that, um, you know, it just didn't work. And, you know, good, bad and different. Um, we have players here now that we're focused on and, Obviously, Percy, you know, the focus is LA right now and moving forward. So our transition to progress is just to make sure we are um, locked in with our players right now and how, how can we improve and how can we be get better, especially heading into this break. Definitely. Awesome. I I'm curious. I mean, obviously, you, you try to win every game, but this is a weird situation with the new Commissioner's Cup that, like, these three games are kind of like playoff games because you need to win them potentially to get into the Commissioner's Cup championship. Do you, how do you approach it? I mean, is it, it's weird to say they must win, but like they kind of are if you want to win that, or you get a chance to win that championship. Yeah, for sure. And you already know the, the, the competitive nature of our players. Um, and that came even in the last part of the, the, the Sparks game, um, just understanding with the rules of the Commissioner's Cup, points matter as well. And so, you know, it, it's a balance of understanding that, that game um, is fun. It's new. It is something that we, we sure, you know, one of our goals to play in, but, at the, but also those games are important to have for us to continue to get to where we need to, as far as flow, as far as feel, as far as um, chemistry with one another. So I think it's twofold. It's you go into the game with the preparation and mindset that we need to, to win these games for a bigger picture. Um, the commissioner's cup is something that doesn't really affect our, um, overall record, but it's something that as a player and as a competitor, if it's there to play a game for money and um, benefit, you know, our teams, our families, then I think that's something that, you know, um, is very important to our team. But uh, in the grand scheme of things, these games mean so much more than that just one game, you know. Do, do you coach differently? I mean, you kind of said like the points matter. So like you're up 12 with a minute left or up 15, do you leave the starters out there to try to get another bucket, so to speak, or you don't hold the ball at the end? Like just little things you never know what it comes down to as far as like points matter. It matters. And it kind of is a, you know, you, you experience that in like Euro cup, you know what I mean? Overseas, that's something that's, that's not really, um, it's new to our game here, but yeah, it, it is important. And, and, and like I said, in that game, that's what happened in that last possession. We needed the points. Of, um, and just to solidify whether it's our record, whether it's understanding that um, that, that matters if we want to be in that game, that point spread and, and the differentiate the difference in that, um, and then understanding how to play the game. You know, it's 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 kind of like um, gamesmanship in a way <laughs> to understand if we want to make sure we we have our spot in it or um, you know have a lead in the score and all those things that um, every point matters. Um, especially with down the stretch, all of these games are commissioner's cup games. Thanks coach. Appreciate it. Um, he was on a podcast, rec podcast recently with uh, Renee Montgomery and uh, they were talking about the NIL that's happening in the NCAA. And uh, you know, he's uh, he said something to the effect that there's a chance that college players could be paid more than WNBA rookies. And which got me thinking, um, is the college game more popular than the WNBA? And if so, why? And if so, and, and if that's the case, then how can the WNBA change that? Um, well, first of all, that's that's an interesting statement because it's it's a little bit of a blanket one that I don't think you can make in, mm -hmm. in, in the way this is all going to unfold. Um, 
this whole name and likeness thing is very much an individual player thing. I think everyone's going to get impacted both negative, well, not negatively, but we'll, we'll have more opportunity, I guess. Um, and that's going to be a player by player. Um, but, but it's going to, it's going to work itself out player by player. And then you assume if somebody does well in, in, in the college ranks, they're probably going to take that with them to the pro ranks. Mm. So I love to argue with him. So this is going to be fun. Um, you're only in college for four years. I've been a professional for way longer than that. So I'm pretty sure I've made more money as a professional, but anyways, back to what we're saying. Um, yeah, I think I, I personally think that women's basketball is kind of backwards at times in this way. The emphasis we put on college basketball is amazing. And this is one of those scenarios where don't take what I say as saying college basketball shouldn't get the attention. They should, they've earned it. They deserve it. What should also happen is those same exact players when they go to the WNBA should get equal attention, maybe more considering they're going to be playing in the WNBA longer. You're going to get to follow their careers for a longer period of time. Obviously, you know, college basketball has just been around longer. So they're, they're able to build those fan bases, those fan bases. I think this, this, this part will probably answer your question even more. Mm -hmm. um, you're connected to a university and this is a special thing. We all know everybody on this call right now who went to, whatever school you went to, shit, it could be middle school. <laughs> it could be high school. You're always going to represent. You're always going to represent. You're always going to be connected. I think what we've seen in the NCAA tournament is special. The way March Madness is set up is special. And there's something about that, that, um, you know, and rightfully so, there's something about that that always gives college basketball in on the women's side um, just a, a little, it's got a little extra to it in terms of popularity, in terms of coverage, in terms of the fan base. Um, so to say it's more popular, I think, yeah. And when it comes to March Madness, there's not a lot of things. There's not a lot of events that are competing with that. From what I understand, you know, the women's final four this year is, is, is if not outdoing very close to in terms of viewership, even the NBA conference finals, this is a special, special tournament. Um, and the WNBA doesn't have its own special tournament. Who knows? Maybe the commissioner cup turns into that. Um, so again, I, I just want to also like, if you're going to use my quotes, just make sure you're saying like, this is one of those scenarios where I'm not trying to say college basketball doesn't deserve that. I'm trying to say they do. And, and the WNBA also does. I got you. So